Again, she asked a ton of questions and you got to love that, right? That's like the coach's dream when they want to ask a lot of questions, how they can get better, how they can help. Kate was always saying that, like, well, how can I make the team better? And so that just shows you, right? There's the selfless character. There's a high character that we really want. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of The Late Sub. It is Thursday, December 12th. We're going to get right into it. We have a couple of headlines from the week we want to get into to keep everyone caught up on what's been going on. we got a little bit of college soccer to talk about, a little bit of college volleyball, and NWSL free agency. But also the bulk of today's episode is going to be a really good chat with Golden State Valkyries head coach Natalie Nakase talking about building a team, the expansion draft that they just went through, what it's like to build an, a new organization in 2024, and this moment in time in women's basketball. So this was a awesome chat. Can't wait to get into it. We're going to hit a couple of headlines first. Let's dig in. All right. So before we get into our interview for today's episode, I want to just run through a couple of headlines, a couple of things that happened this week since the last time we talked to y'all. I do want to shout out the North Carolina Tar Heels for winning their 22nd NCAA soccer title, their 23rd national championship uh, on Monday night. They beat Wake Forest one to nothing. This is a really big rejuvenation for North Carolina's program. As people know, you know, college soccer giant Anson Doran steps away from the program at the beginning of this year. Damon Nahas takes over as interim manager. He will be the head coach going forward after winning this national championship. So he has kind of been pushing to, to become the permanent head coach of North Carolina. They also saw a lot of roster change from last year to this year. They had 11 players turn pro and nine players transfer out. This group coming together to win this national championship is a, a big moment for North Carolina, a big moment for college soccer. As again, we see the way that these pipelines to the pros change and obviously very big shout out to Damon Nahas for getting it done very cool to see that ascendancy in the large shoes to fill you know one way or another right so congratulations to North Carolina for winning the college cup and that's kind of it I think for domestic soccer in the United States for the years so wanted to give that a shout out also wanted to mention that their NCAA volleyball tournament is still going on. You can check out the Sweet 16 and I believe the Elite Eight this weekend. There's going to be separation between the contenders and the pretenders. I highly recommend tuning into ESPN, ESPN Networks. I think a lot of the games will be either today, tomorrow on ESPN 2. Check those out. This is when the volleyball gets really, really good. All four number one seeds are still in. You've got three of the number two seeds still in. There's going to be some rivalries. There's going to be some inner conference kind of championship pushing type stuff. It's going to be really, really nice. So check that out as well. And then the final thing is I want to just mention that we're going to be keeping an eye on NWSL free agency. I mentioned the on the field stuff is done for domestic American soccer, but free agency is coming for your faves. If you're a, if you're a fan of a particular team, these teams are going to look very different next year. We saw the end of year roster decisions being made. There were some players that did not have their options picked up. There are a number of really big names, Marta, Midge Purse, Becky Sauerbrunn, Kristen Perez, Caroline, who are in free agency and negotiating new contracts. will be interesting to see if these players decide to re-sign with their teams or if they decide to look elsewhere. Um, and the nice thing, again, I keep mentioning this about NWSL free agency is that we're going to be seeing the waiver wire be completed this week. There's going to be a slight moratorium for the holidays, which is, I think is very fair. And then we're going to see some major stuff in January and February because there just isn't too much off season for the NWSL and these players have to figure their futures out. So I would take a look at, at some of the reporting on what all of these end of roster moves were for these teams. Take a look at maybe what teams or what players maybe your team would like to pick up and also which maybe big names might be moving on. So NWSL free agency is another big thing we're going to be keeping an eye on for the next couple of weeks. But now I want to take a brief step back into the past. We're going to be discussing the expansion draft that the Golden State Valkyries went through last Friday, and we got a chance to sit down with head coach Natalie Nikase to talk through the awkward, perhaps, process of the expansion draft, how she wants to build her team, what it's like to build an expansion side in 2024, a lot of really good stuff about her background and what makes her feel prepared for this moment. I love this conversation. Everyone, please enjoy. So we are joined today with Golden State Valkyries head coach, Natalie Nakase. Natalie, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. I think maybe the best place to start is this exact moment. I know you guys have been doing a lot of preparation, getting ready to build this roster, and it is sort of one step at a time with the expansion draft and free agency and then the college draft. You do the expansion draft on Friday. How invigorating is it to finally have you know names, faces, players that you can actually start communicating with to build this team for next year? Yeah, actually, that's a great word. I'm going to take that word invigorating yeah. because I've been using excited every two seconds. But no, actually, you know, I'm also proud, um, kind of proud of 
what Ohema and Vanya and our scouts behind the scenes have done. Um, I'm just going to be honest. They did the heavy load of everything. They, you know, Vanya did uh, the Excel sheets, Ohema did the Excel sheets. And then we kind of just did this whole cycle of like collaborate, discuss. And then we went to go watch film and we just kept doing that over and over. And I'm just going to be honest. I watched a ton of film mm -hmm. while they, you know, set me up for success. And then we did it again and again. So just credit to all the hard work that went on behind. And then the more I watched the film, the more I'm like, oh my gosh, this squad is, is pretty good. So I'm, yeah, I'm just excited. How many rounds you talk about, you know, watching film, talking about it with the group, watching film again, how many rounds of team building kind of goes into that final list in an expansion draft, would you say? Uh, all of it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's the biggest piece is, you know, if you know championship teams, they have the best team chemistry, um, they're connected. And so that was a huge part of it as we watch the characteristics of each player. Um, for me, like making sure that they get along with their teammates, they have high character and they always put their, the team before self. And so, like I just mentioned, I watch everything. I watch how they give high fives. I watch how they communicate and receive coaching. I, I watch how they pick their teammates up, um, you know, off the ground if they're doing that. Like all these little things that I did as a team, as a teammate that I really enjoyed. And, and I thought it also lifted the team when, when it needed. So those are the type of players that, you know, we were looking for. That person first element in building a locker room seems very important through this process as well, because we all know the expansion draft, it's exciting, but it can be kind of awkward, right? It's players kind of finding out what their futures are going to be moving from one market to another. How did you handle that part, the human part of letting these players know that they were wanted, you were excited about them? Because this is, while exciting, a bit of upheaval in their career as well. Yeah, I did have to take a step back as excited as we were, you know, we were changing lives. Um, that's huge. And then I've, I've played overseas, so I know kind of what it's like to be away from your family. And then you're living, you know, into a completely different culture. And I understand that's really hard. So a lot of our players who are international, it was more like we did tell them we wanted to be just really excited. We're just like, Hey, you know, yeah, but yeah. it's gotta be awkward, right? Like you have to sit and think like you have three strangers. Mm -hmm. If they didn't, you know, know us through the league that you have three strangers calling you mm -hmm. and FaceTiming you and putting, you know, their face like this and, you know, hoping for the best. And uh, I think all, honestly, all of them were genuinely excited. Um, and, but again, like I am changing lives here. And so I wanted to respect that and give them time to, and give them a little bit of space to take it all in, but at the same time, understand how much wanted they were, you know, for us. And um, that hopefully if they, they come and they stay, they're going to have a great career with uh, Golden State Valkyries. Well, and it has to also feel like you have this nice foundation where you know that the team has announced the facilities, how nice those are going to be. Players are knowing that they're coming in to a place where they will be supported. They are going to be, I know, I mean, I, I have a background in soccer. There are many expansion sides in the NWSL. You, the things go wrong, right? In the first yeah. year of an expansion, always. Right. But this is a team where people are going to come in and they're going to feel supported. How nice is it for you as a coach kind of selling people on that vision to know that that is there in Golden State? Yeah, that's just a huge... Um... Huge thank you to Joe Lacob. You know, I mean, he's our owner. He's the one who's putting this vision together in terms of all the resources that we need, because it's not just having, you know, a facility, but just having the recovery room, um, places where we could do, you know, mental mental health, health or spaces where they can have their own private locker room, but then their own lounge too, if they wanted to. It's just like those little spaces where you're not just playing basketball. You're here to take care of your body. We want a longevity career, career here for your for all the players to maximize their, their careers as well. And so we also want them to be very, very comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just excited. We have an owner that just is going above and beyond and those little things, they matter, but they also deserve it. Like I've been with, you know, the NBA for 10 years and I'm just like, these women deserve it, you know, even more just because of the way they have been flying and the way yeah. they have had you no, know, like we practice at, the practice court three, maybe at UNLV. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we yes. had no locker room. I didn't, we didn't even have a bathroom. I mean, the bathroom, we had to run across, you know, the hall and go upstairs. We had no place to change. We met in the corner, you know, with the table. So look at the ways, you know, uh, Mark Davis, you know, with the Las Vegas Aces and yep. then Joe Lake of all these owners investing. It's yeah. huge. Incredible. So let's talk about some of these players. I think the one everyone kind of gravitated to was Kate Martin, not only right. because she is, you know, this growing superstar off the court, but someone that you know very well because she played for the Aces while you were there as an assistant. You've already spoken about what she brings off the court and that that locker room element is so important with her. But mm -hmm. is it possible that she is even possibly a little bit underrated on what she can do 
on the court. So can you talk a little bit about what you saw from her again, that, that character that she brings, but also how you see her fitting in playing on this team? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, her work ethic is probably one of the top notch. So as you, you know, you just described. So when a person has that type of work ethic, I think then the limits are endless, right? Someone who just loves to be in the gym and not only loves to be in the gym, but go gain speed. It's a completely different element of an, another person that just like enjoys to be in the gym. So when Kate goes, she goes at full maximum speed. And so that makes her progress, I think, even quicker than most. And so I'm excited to get back in the gym with her on that. And then just the a level of how much she wants to learn. Like anytime I'm like, Kate, 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 Kate we're going to watch some film. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When? You know, so it's just doing stuff more than just, you know, getting through the drills on the court. It's learning off the court too as well. And then Again, she asks a ton of questions, mm-hmm. and you got to love that, right? That's like the coach's dream when they want to ask a lot of questions, how they can get better, um, how they can help. Kate was always saying that, like, well, how can I make the team better? Mm-hmm. And so that just shows you, right, there's the selfless character. There's a high character that we really want. So just um, I would say, yeah, her role could be, honestly, whatever she puts into it. Mm-hmm. I really do. Like, I hate yeah. to say, like, oh, she'll be this type of player, this type of player. Like, to me – we're a whole brand new team. So the first day of training camp, show me what you got. And yeah. I guarantee you Kate's going to be a lot better season uh, player than we did last year because she's going to go against, you know, on the unrivaled league, she's going to go against some of the top athletes yeah. in the world. So that's going to give her a lot of confidence. Well, and you saw just how beloved she was from the outpouring, the the pe- messages from Aces players, you know, some of, you know, dismay at losing someone like Kate in the locker room. Was there any crosstalk from any former Aces players that sent out just like, man, you're taking Kate from us? What's going on? I had a couple of them, you know, yeah, we, we, I had a couple of them, but like, it's all in good fun. That yeah. just shows how much they love her yep. um, and how much uh, we love her now. I mean, it's just, again, just credit to the person that Kate is like, you guys all know she's literally pouring herself out, I think in social media, um, which makes her great. Cause she's just not afraid to be herself. Mm-hmm. And she just uh, generally like loves people. Just going to be honest. And you you mentioned, I think this was on expansion draft night, that Kate can shoot threes. And I'm not going to specifically ask about sort of that role that she's going to have, but Vegas was known for stretching the floor, right? That was part of the Aces superpower, even just having someone like Asia Wilson, who as a big player can play that kind of stretch four. Mm -hmm. How how do you balance when you are putting the the on-court pieces together? Tammy Fegbenley is obviously going to be a great anchor inside. Mm -hmm. How important is shooting as it seems like the entire WNBA is moving probably more into that stretch offense? Yeah, so Temi actually can shoot threes. Yep. Um, she shot really big threes um, with the London Lions in their championship run. So I'm not sure if how many people know that, but mm-hmm. she is very capable. And so she's not just going to be rim running and protecting the rim and um, changing people's shots. I mean, she does it all. But yep. the fact that she could space the floor, that's only going to help us, obviously. Um, but no, that's that's part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say the spacing, just if you take a look at all the players, they're all capable of shooting threes. And so I think that's definitely something I'm going to take. But, you know, we're not, you know, obviously we're still building right. um, our roster. So I'm going to play to the strengths of our players. That's, mm-hmm. I think, the, most, the best thing is, like, I want to set them up for success. So where can I place them on the court to make sure that we come out with a win every night? <laughs> of course, yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of mentioned all of those, those really the controllables, it seems, right? Right. You talk about competition, work ethic, placing, you know, a calling card on your defense, all of those things that you can bring kind of from moment one, right. as you are probably going to be figuring out, like, I mean, we've mentioned there's going to be free agency, there's going to be the college draft, but when you get this group together into training camp, what are those initial things that you're looking for in a player to walk in and see this as a brand new opportunity to get playing time for Golden State? I mean, you just actually just said it. Like the controllables are really our things that I want to be able to enhance because, hey, guess what? Because we can control them. Mm -hmm. Like their effort, their attitude, um, you know, are you being a good teammate today? Like those are the things that I really want to push. But I also want to start too with training camp with like kind of making them a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, every game is going to be uncomfortable to an extent, right? Because you have another team that just really wants to beat you and kill you. So, you know, how can I make training camp uncomfortable but also bringing us and keeping us connected, you know, as a team. So those are some of the things that I'm really going to stress. Um, and also just, I want them to be themselves, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the reason why is because I've chosen these, we handpicked these players. Mm-hmm. And so we handpicked them for a reason. I think that's what is really unique and, and great about the expansion draft is we get to be creative and intentionally handpick players. And so I want them to be themselves because that's why we picked them. 
And people people know you obviously as assistant coach for the Aces, the great successes that you've had under um, Becky Hammond and her staff. But as you mentioned before, you have a background in the NBA. You have played and coached overseas. You have this breadth of experience. Was there any particular experience that you had that you feel like prepared you the most for this moment? Or does it feel like you're pulling little things from all of your different experiences to be ready for this, this role as a head coach? That's a great question. I would say both, mm -hmm. you know, I'm taking a little bit of everything and I'm like still constantly learning. I'm constantly calling and texting a, a bunch of my mentors, I'm actually making new mentors along the way, just because um, I love learning. But I would say the biggest experience that I had with Becky was probably that first championship run. Yeah, that was really, really hard for us because again, going in, I think we were, we were ranked to finish fifth. Mm -hmm. I want to say fifth or sixth. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on that. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And so going through the playoffs, we were just constantly like, okay, you know, Connecticut is huge. <laughs> John Paul Jones is <laughs> right. huge. Yeah, right. Brianna Jones is huge. ATC, it's just like, what else can we do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kind of came up with this idea, like, let's go opposite. Let's go small ball. You know, mm -hmm. something that I took from uh, Tyron Liu is he's yeah. a big believer in small ball. So I'm like, hey, let's switch it up. Um, and so we all agreed, like, let's try something new. And so I just remember um, just Becky just being super open um, with with ideas, but like her just kind of taking it by the by the horns and she just went with it. Yeah. Like the way she was able to make um, adjustments on the fly that game, the finals was just, I mean, I don't know how many times you watched it, but like it just, it just we just kept going back and forth yeah. with Connecticut, yeah. back and mm -hmm. forth with Kirk. And I thought Kirk did a great job yeah. um, countering some of our adjustments. And so I just remember like, we had no idea how good we were gonna mm -hmm. be that year. And so just to win it in our first year, um, it, it just bonded us and drew us even closer. So yeah, that was probably the best memory. And even mentioning Kurt, a lot of coaching change in the dub this year. It's a little bit probably challenging to not have a ton of tape on, you know, how any of these other teams are going to be playing. But right. how exciting is it to be in this new era where there are going to be new ideas coming into the league? And you're seeing people from a lot of different coaching pipelines to kind of open up this new world of women's basketball to these new fans who are coming in. Yeah, I mean, you never want to see people obviously lose your jo lose their jobs. I mean, so I kind of like I feel that's true. Like, There's it's like a double edged sword, right? Yeah, or, it's a double edged sword. Yeah. So like, I don't wish anyone to lose their job, but obviously with new opportunities, there's going to be some change. And, you know, some of these coaches, though, who have coached college, you can kind of look at back and kind of start studying uh, their tendencies. Yeah. You know, Kirsten Bell, she played um for the coach the head coach at atlanta so that's true. she can have the full scouting report she's like listen here's where <laughs> i mean we be. scouted her <laughs> yeah. yeah right so yeah. we looked at her so i remember uh yeah. so the the films and the games that we watched so yeah you can just do a ton of scouting you know from the previous teams that these coaches have played for so there's one little secret i guess that i'm trying to sure. i'm going to give yeah. away um but also players tendencies you know that can that can always be studied and like, and I just love that. I mean, I'm just kind of, I guess, a geek at heart with video. Like, I just love watching film and I, I love watching tendencies because I'm like a constantly learning. And then just kind of to close up, I mean, as I said, just one piece of the puzzle here, you've got these great players coming in from the expansion draft, but as we know, the process is far from over. What do you expect the next, you know, let's say three months for Golden State to be as you continue to build this roster? What are some of the things you're looking for in free agency? Some of the things you're looking for in the college game? Yeah, I would say, um, I mean, with the college game and the free agency, it's just us just making sure we do our homework mm -hmm. like we've been doing. It's honestly, here goes that, you know, that process again is collaborate, discuss, and then watch film. Like, we just want to make sure we pick the right players that's going to fit our culture. That's the biggest thing is we don't miss and we don't, like, it's kind of like doing your homework and just making sure you double tri double check, triple check. Like, we don't want to miss on anything that we could we could have over overlooked. And then, um, honestly, for me, as the head coach of 11 new players, like, I want to make sure I reach out to them, I stay connected with them, I FaceTime them, like, I really want to get to know them, because, unfortunately, they are, you know, not physically here, they're right. overseas, actually, everyone but Kate is overseas, and so I really kind of have to put in my time, and, and I want to put in my time, because I think time is one of the most valuable things you can give someone, and so that's really where I'm going to kind of take a step forward is just to make sure I stay connected and learn every new player that we drafted on expansion night. Amazing. Exciting times ahead. Cannot wait to see you guys in action in 2025. Natalie Nakase, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the questions. They're great.
And that has been today's edition of The Late Sub. I am your host, Claire Watkins. Shout out to producer extraordinaire Parker Fenton. We'll be back next week with more off-season stuff to talk about, I'm sure, in soccer, basketball. We got some good college basketball matchups this weekend. Um, We're just going to keep going, keep rolling until the end of the year. Thank you so much to Natalie Nakase for talking to me for today's episode. And we just got more to do, more women's sports to talk about. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you all next week. (laughs) 